morning everyone, welcome back to Johnny Cars ZXR. Uh, this week we're going to be removing the petrol tank, the fuel tank. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Uh, people have been asking about the CBR project. I am going to be doing the CBR project but I'm not going to be doing it till the autumn time basically because I have no funds for it at the moment so when I get the funds hopefully I'll have some funds in October November time and then we'll be back on to that doing whatever parts we can I think I want to get the engine started up so I can actually air it so I'm going to be taking the cam chain tensioner out cleaning it if it really needs cleaning because they do seize up and cause the tank chain to rattle and then if I'm happy that it is that I'll just put it all back together try and get it back in the frame try and wire it all back up and then try and start it up and see what it sounds like and then if it sounds okay we will crack on taking it all back out and crack on painting the frame and refurbishing all the bearings and you know all the usual stuff so hopefully that will be in October or November time just to let you guys know okay so I know this is not the uh, standard ZXR 750 H1 but uh, anyway this is the picture of my Street Fighter and uh, just in case there's any confusion of what the uh, standard ZXR 750H1 H2 looks like here's a picture the ZXR 750H1 as standard Okay, so this is the ZXR H1 with an H2 engine in it. It has been street fighted, but I've kept the petrol tank with the same fixings as factory. So basically, it's just going to be exactly the same as the ZXR 750 H1. Seat unit completely different, obviously. So I did actually. Uh, Make the subframe myself. Basically, there's just the bolt goes through there, and the bolt goes through there, and then there is like a a wire mesh thing that goes there. Uh, these are red light strips which light up when I switch the ignition on. And I'll just lift the sheet seat off because it's not fixed to show you a bit more. Okay, so the seat unit will just lift off as I say, just slides out, just slides under there like the old seat unit used to. Just put these two metal pieces on, which slide into it. Uh, did make my own wire, my own plug cluster, cluster plug, plug cluster or whatever you want to call it in so whenever I want to remove the seat I can just unplug it and remove the seat nice and easy and here's the other end of the plug so you just move your seat put it somewhere safe like I said I didn't make the subframe myself just sort of fix the top bar first fixed it to the frame and uh, fix the bottom bar you know just Cut it to size, welded it all together. I did put these extra bits on because the seat was a bit too close for me, so I put those on to pull the seat back a bit so it's not quite pressing against there. So that was a mistake when I made the subframe. Uh, put the fixings on that were originally on the other 
subframe so the petrol tank fixes exactly the same although there's no screws in it at the moment but I will show you when I bring you around to this side okay so there's two bolts here and it is exactly the same on the other side but this side you also have two bolts for the fuel tap which you also well I find it easier to remove the fuel tap rather than undo all the pipes just remove the fuel tap and remove the main feed but make sure the fuel tap is switched off obviously then just undo your fuel tap it's usually 10 mil bolts in there I think but these have got 6 mil allen bolts remove both of them uh, if you're wondering what this is it's just a green strip light for shows or whatever so then that just lifts off and you can pull the main feed pipe off which is that one which looks pretty squashed so no wonder it doesn't run very well Yes, as you can see, it's got a nasty crease in the middle of it. Do you see that? There's a nasty crease in there. Hopefully you can see it, sure you can. So that's probably another reason why the bike's not running too well. So it might not need the carburetors cleared it out after all. So he's got to put a new piece of pipe on there. With but I've still got to take the fuel tank off so just leave that loose there for now and obviously we just undo these other two which are the same 6mm allen key it's one there's number two uh, I've already taken them out on the other side so now the petrol tank should lift but there is one more bolt to remove which is at the front of the fuel tank so if we just go down between the handlebars and the tank there is one which is loose already but there's the other fixing Let's just undo that remove the bolt and then all we've got to do now is disconnect the fuel tank disconnect the fuel pipe uh, I don't think there's any wire fixings on this for the fuel gauge I'm pretty sure there isn't so all we've got to do now is remove the fuel pipe okay so I will put some uh, protective rag over the paintwork because I'm not sure whether this fuel will just wash the paint away uh, it is in the off position that says on that says reverb so that one must say on off yes that one says off so that's the off position all we have to try and do is remove this pipe easier said than done you can use a pair of pliers or whatever to pull it but uh, this particular occasion I'm going to try and use a screwdriver just get it down the edge of the pipe once you've broke the seal it should come away pretty easy like so there's a bit of spillage but not a lot okay then we can remove the fuel tank so now we should simply be able to lift the petrol tank off and put it somewhere safe oh, there is something else attached 
been that long since I've took this fuel tank off. There is something else attached. That's just the uh, overflow pipe. You know when you overfill it at the filler cap. That's just uh, in case you overfill it and it'll run away onto the road. So that should just lift off out of the way. And there we have it. Now we have access to the uh, airbox and the carburetors, carburetors. I have to uh, remember about that pipe when I get this back together. Try and put it so it's not going to squash it. Okay then, yes, almost forgetting. The original bike would have had side panels like this underneath the seat, which there is a fix in here which fixed it to the subframe. There was another fix in there and that's it really. I think there was a fixing underneath but that's broken and at the front fixing it was just a, a look what you push through and there should have been another lug there and there's also a lug at the back. So if you've got the normal ZXR, uh, I'm not sure if you would have to remove this. Probably make things easier if you did remove it, but so the petrol tank will just go up to the line, which is just there. So you'll probably still be able to get everything off without moving these side panels. But if not, then that's where the fixing points are. Okay, so that about wraps this video up. I hope I've explained it uh, easy enough how to remove the fuel tank. Uh, I know mine ain't got side panels on, but I hope that's explained it as well. I don't really think you need to take the side panel off, but you know. Yes, there's a lot more in the video than I was going to put in it, but basically it's just the video of how to remove your tank from your 1989 ZXR. Uh, yes, I would just like to explain that uh, if I haven't made myself clear, which I'm not very good at making myself clear in these videos, what I am aiming for is to get this bike back on the road, MOT'd, before the end of the summer, so I can sell it and put the funds towards the CBR and hopefully get another project as well. So that is my goal with this bike. Hope you've all enjoyed it, hope it all made sense. Uh, please like, share, comment, hit that notification bell so you can see my next videos before anybody else. And uh, as always, we'll see you next week. See you in another life, brother.